Greetings friends, Pastor Edge here bringing you another lesson from another legend. Thank you as always for joining us for this episode. We are talking about the character of Samson and I'm excited about it. Don't tell anybody, but Caleb and I are in the teen center. We slipped down here Sunday after the morning service and we've been snacking on some cookies watching some dude perfect shh keep it to yourself we don't want the parents to know but we're going to transition now and we are going to the screen and we're going to talk about our lesson about samson samson is such an exciting character just some quick review samson number one in his disobedience do not forget about it. Such a tremendous thought. Such an amazing thing to think of the disobedience of Samson. How much potential he had. How much he could have done for the cause of Christ. Samson was an amazing man, but Samson could have been so much better if he learned to be an obedient man. He was disobedient. First of all, we said to his parents, this is an amazing thing. Secondly, to his God, why, why, why would someone want to be disobedient to their God, disobedient to their parents? Obedience is such an amazing thing. Obedience is something that God desires of us, something that God teaches and something that God pushes and points us to be a part of. The amazing thing about Samson is in many cases not what he did, but what he could have done if he would have just been willing to obey, just been willing to do the things that God would have him to do. For our next thought, I want us to think of this. One of the most important things that God's people can do is to focus on the things that please God. What is it that pleases God? What is it that should bring our focus? What is it that should be a part of our life and the focus of our life in regards to the things of God? How is it that we should look at it? How is it that we should see it? So many amazing passages of Scripture that we have. But I want to start out with a couple of characters from history, if you will. Legendary baseball player Hank Aaron here. He's actually one of my favorites. Lots of records, lots of uh, interesting things that he was able to accomplish in his career. The other character we have uh, is Yogi Berra. An amazing player in his own right. Interesting story is told of these two legendary baseball players. Hank Aaron of the Milwaukee Braves was new to the major leagues. But was already one of the best home run hitters in baseball. Yogi Berra was the colorful veteran catcher for the New York Yankees. Their teams were playing as it would be in the World Series. Barrow was famous for distraction, and he would do everything in his power to distract the batters with his constant chatter as they were warming up and as they were readying themselves, as they was getting into the batter's box, as they was knocking the dirt off of their cleats, all the different things that they were doing. Barrow would constantly be in their ears, striving to distract them with his constant chatter. Hank Aaron stepped up to the plate and Barra, as he was known started in on him hank he would say you're holding the bat all wrong in fact you're supposed to hold the bat where you can read the label aaron focused a keen eye on the pitcher ignored the chatter of yogi Berra, and then proceeded to hit the first pitch over the fence into the left field bleachers for a home run he ran around the bases, came back triumphant to the home plate. He paused and looked at Yogi Berra and said, strangely enough, I didn't come up here to read. Interesting story about these two interesting players. What is it that causes you personally 
to be distracted from your main objective? Are you distracted from what God has for you? I want you to jot that down in your notes. Our second thought within this idea of Samson and wasted potential, number two is distracted. Not only was Samson disobedient, but Samson was distracted. He never could keep his mind and focus on what God had. His desire was to look at so many other things and to be in, uh, uh, in the area of so many other things. I want us to look in our Bibles in this particular passage of Scripture, Philippians chapter number 3. It's a very familiar passage and one of my favorite passages, Philippians chapter number 3. Verse number 13, the Bible reminds us, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Watch it now. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What an amazing passage of Scripture. What an amazing thought, an amazing principle in regards to uh, this understanding that we see that Paul is writing to the Philippian people and reminding them of so many things uh, within these different passages. But in this particular one, Paul said we got to focus we got to make sure that we understand what the goal ahead is. We, we've got to understand that what lies ahead is so important that it deserves our focused attention. It deserves us to be focused solely on what God wants for us rather than being distracted. Another passage of Scripture jotted in your notes. You don't have to turn there. Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says, we have, Wherefore, Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's interesting in this first passage in Philippians chapter 3, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are uh, behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark. Paul would go into Hebrews. And into this passage of Scripture, we see the thought and the understanding, wherefore we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I'll say, hey, I'm reaching towards this mark. I'm reaching towards this prize. I've got something that I'm striving to accomplish. And there are people who are watching. There's a cloud of witnesses around me. There are people that see what I'm trying to accomplish. And young person, I want you to understand that. Everything that you do in this life is observed by someone else. Somebody is watching you. Someone is is observing what you're doing and leads me to this next passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, watch it verse 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest it by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. Interesting. It's interesting the verbiage that is used. It's interesting what is discussed within this particular passage of Scripture. And as we look and observe all three of these passages, the Bible is teaching us something very important, and that is that we must remain focused. We must remain faithful. We must remain with our eyes, our minds, our ears, our hearts, our bodies in tune to the things of God. Why? Because there's something that God has for us to focus on. 
There's something that God has for us to strive to accomplish. There's something that God wants you as a young person to do with your life, and it doesn't come by being distracted. When we look at this particular passage of Scripture, when we look at this particular lesson from this particular legend, we find this very interesting in this thought process. Look at it with me. Letter A. Samson was distracted by past victories. Past victories. Is there anything that you've ever accomplished, young person? Is there something in your life that you strove to achieve, that you worked diligently, that you worked hard to accomplish? Is there something like that? And you say, Pastor Edge, this is what I've achieved. This is what I've accomplished. This is what's happened in my life. This is what I've done. This is what God has allowed me. This, you fill in the blank. Is there something like that from the past? Oh, I don't mind hearing about past victories. I don't mind hearing about those things that, that God has privileged you to do. Maybe it's, your, maybe it's your salvation date. Maybe it's the date you were baptized. Maybe it's the date you made a major important decision in your life. Maybe it's the day you decided to go to Bible college. Maybe it's the, the day that you decided which Bible college. Maybe it's the day that you packed up and left. Maybe you're a young person. You're headed off to college. Maybe it's the day that you decided what God had for you, for your life, and for your future. I don't have a problem with hearing about past victories. The Apostle Paul, however correct, characterized himself as forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. The sad thing about past victories, the sad thing about things that have taken place in our past is that if we spend too much time dwelling on those things from behind, we miss the opportunities of the future. Again, you say, Pastor Edge, what about this? What about that? What about these amazing things? I don't want to forget them completely. I don't want to push them all to the side. But I don't want to dwell on them so much so that they keep me from accomplishing the future. Accomplishing the opportunities ahead of me. We must learn to see that past victories can destroy us if we just focus on them all the time. If Samson had not returned to see the lion he had killed, he would never have seen the honey nor broken his vow to God. He chose to go back to his former sin, not intending to partake in it, but the glory in it for just a moment just led to a huge failure in his life. Paul said, reaching forth, I'm setting that bar I'm striving to accomplish and to reach out and to grasp that prize. What about that uncorruptible crown? What is it that God has for us in the future? Forgetting those things which are behind. Oh yes, I'm excited about your past victories, teenagers. Oh yes, I'm excited about the day that you made personal decisions in your life for the cause of Christ. Oh yes, I'm excited about that. But let's not dwell on it so much so that we miss the opportunities of the future. Are you running that race? We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What do those people see when they look down, when they peer, and they see you, and they observe what you're doing with your life? What do they see? Do they see a young person who is moving towards the future? Do they see a young person who is moving ahead for the cause of Christ? Or do they see a young person who's trapped in their past? You say, Pastor Edge, my past is not a bad past. No, I'm not saying it is, but are you trapped in it? Many people are trapped in a good past as well. Many of you grew up Christians, uh, grew up in Christian families rather, and you trusted Christ at an early age, and you grew up learning to be that person that God wanted you to be. But let's not rest on those laurels. Let's, <coughs> excuse me, let's not rest all the things that we've accomplished in the past, but rather let's look towards the future. Let's look to accomplish great things 
for the cause of Christ. As you walk up to the plate, as we gave the illustration with Hank Aaron and Yogi Berra, are you distracted? Do you have your eye on the ball? Do you have your bat off your shoulder? Are you crouched properly? Do you have the right stance? Are you keened in on what the pitcher is doing? Do you have a trained eye as you observe the pitch? Are you ready to hit the ball out of the park? Or are you worried about what the hind catcher is saying? You're worried about what the guy behind you is saying. You're worried about the person who's following after you. You're worried about what they do. Are you worried about the past? You know, kids, a lot of times Satan will use the past, the past to destroy us. He'll use the past to lock in on us. And he'll use that to hold us back and to hold us down. He'll use that to keep us from accomplishing great feats for the cause of Christ. Why? Because he wants you to remember what has happened. And he wants that to paralyze you from accomplishing the future. We see Samson was disobedient, but Samson was distracted. Samson was distracted by his past victories. The Bible reminds us of this in Philippians 3, as we've already discussed for some time now. But let's move on. Let's look at this. Letter B. Letter B. Samson was distracted by current temptations. Samson was distracted by current temptation. When we look and when we think about temptations we think about the days ahead we think about the future we think about the present as well when Samson met Delilah he had a choice he could flee temptation or he could fall to his desires we're teaching in our TNA Sunday School class here at our church about dreams. About Joseph. About Potiphar. About all the things that took place there. And Joseph fled from that temptation at Potiphar's house and from Potiphar's wife. Genesis chapter 39, if you'd like to look it up. He could have pursued Potiphar's wife. But he chose not to. Potiphar's wife worked very hard to trick him. She worked very hard to deceive him. She worked very hard to distract him. She worked very hard to do everything she could to lure him away from the things of God, to lure him away from his daily duties, to lure him away from his responsibilities. He desired to do the things of God, and she desired to distract him. Not only can we find ourselves distracted by past victories, not only do we find ourselves distracted, as Paul alludes to in those many passages in Hebrews and 1 Corinthians and Philippians, we find so many verses of Scripture, but we must also understand within these passages of Scripture, there are so many stories and there are so many lessons for us to see, and these legends of Scripture are doing so many great things, but then we find ourselves following the negative. When you look at the life of Samson, do you look at the negative? When you see the life of Samson, do you see the negative of his life? Or do you see the potential that was wasted? Do you see the future that might have been? Do you see what he possibly could have attempted and accomplished? If he would have just simply done the things that God would have him to do. So many lessons from Samson. He went back to the vineyard to take a woman he was not supposed to marry simply because she pleased him. She did not please God. She was not a godly woman. She was not the type of woman that God would be pleased for Samson to have. She was not the spouse that God had ordained for Samson to have. She was not desirous of using and working together with Samson in the ministry of God and doing great things for him. She had no desire of this whatsoever, but yet Samson went to her and Samson told his dad, 
dad, go get her because she pleases me. I asked the question this morning in my sermon here at our church. Are you committed to what God wants for you? Or are you committed to what you want for you? When we look at these stories and we look at these lessons, we see so many things happening. My question to you this morning, young person, is do you learn from those lessons? Do you see what God is trying to teach you when we see these stories and we understand the lessons that have been given to us? As we live our lives today, it really doesn't matter, young person, what pleases you. You see, what actually matters is what pleases God. Are you willing to take your life and use it for the cause of Christ? Are you willing to look and to do some self-inspection? To find out who you really are? To find out whose life you're really living? Are you willing to look at the life that God has given you and to use it for the cause of Christ? Are you willing to press towards the mark? Are you willing to see the cloud of witnesses and to do exactly as God would have you to do? Because so many people are up there cheering you on, teenager, cheering you on, young person, saying, hey, I see you accomplishing great things for God. Are you willing to be focused? Are you willing to see the path ahead that God has laid out for you? Are you willing to look at the life of Samson? And rather than being distracted, rather than being distracted from your past victories, rather than being distracted by your current temptations, are you willing to look a little further down the road? Are you willing to look a little further down the path are you, are you willing to look a little bit farther down that way and say, hey, that's what I want to achieve. That's what I want to accomplish. I must remain focused on the task at hand. Dear young person, I want you to have a great week. But more importantly, I want you to have a focused